Hey guys and welcome to a bit of a special video today. I'm going to be talking a bit about the E3 convention that went on last week, uh, last Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I don't know, somewhere last week. Um, but yeah, if you don't know what E3 is, it's basically the biggest gaming event of the year. It's held in um, LA. Uh, convention center every year and basically all of the big game developers all the big games uh, new consoles everything gets revealed there and you get tra loads of trailers and everything like that I'm sure most of you guys will know what E3 is but for them a few of you that don't uh, just type it in and you'll find so many videos of loads of games that are coming out uh, releases and everything like that so yeah let's just get straight into this now the big talking point this year was the next gen consoles now the Xbox One or the PS4 that's the big question um, loads of people have been saying PS4 just because um, they're saying it's a lot better but if you actually compare them there's not actually much difference between the Xbox One and the PS4 and as you guys know um, I play on the Xbox and I have for a long time now I did actually start out on PlayStation PlayStation 1 um, and then 2 and then I got my first 360 and ever since then I've been an Xbox uh, person uh, so Deep down, um, I'm getting the Xbox One, just, I don't know, there's just so many better things for me um, compared to how other people look at it. Most people, um, actually, if you look at the specs, the specs for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are literally the same. Um, don't quote me on this, but looking at them, they've got 8 gig RAM, 500 gig memory, and everything like that. The next big talking point was the price of them. Now, the PS4, I think, is 360 uh, oh, 359.99, and the Xbox One is 429.99. Now that is 70 pound more. But then with Xbox, you get connect actually with the console, which makes it a lot easier to turn your Xbox on and do simple commands like watch movies and everything like that. So you know, it's Xbox One. Pay the extra 70 pound for the connect. It is actually going to work out a lot better, and I don't know, a lot more less time consuming. If that makes sense. Um, now the next, well, one of the big talking points was that um, with the PS3, when they brought that out, you could not have uh, backwards compatible games, which was a big thing, whereas with the Xbox 360, you could. Uh, now, that's reversed this year. With the Xbox One, because um, they built it to go with a new entire platform of games, and now they have actually Blu-ray player in it, whereas the PS3 did have Blu-ray player in it, and they can have the player. PS4 can now do PS4, PS3, and all of them, uh, PS2, and all the way down to PS1, I think. Whereas the Xbox One can only do Xbox One games. But um, Microsoft have actually, well, it's not been confirmed exactly. Um, it's just been like a leak that maybe they might do some way of you downloading the game on your Xbox 360 and then being able to download, uh, being able to play it through the cloud on your Xbox One. So that would be a pretty good thing if they did actually put that in there. Um, other than that, there's not really that much to talk about with the consoles except for the controllers. Um, and the consoles. The controllers, the Xbox One controller looks really really good, they've improved it. It's basically the same design as the Xbox 360 controller, just a lot more sleek and a lot more swish. They've actually done the back of the controller to be flat now, the battery pack, which will make it a lot more easier to hold. Uh, the Xbox, uh, Xbox 4, the PlayStation 4 controller, to me looks, I don't know, a bit sort of squarish, like the handles aren't angled, uh, the like side bits, they're really like square and it just looks a bit uncomfortable. Um, uh, that's just my opinion, you know, you can put down in the comments which console you will be getting. And yeah, that's basically it for the console. On to some games. At E3 there was some awesome games. Um, and one thing I didn't actually mention um, was on the Xbox One there is a lot more exclusive games. And a lot more things like Call, uh, Call of Duty map packs come out a month before on Xbox. And the first Battlefield 4 map pack will actually be coming out a month, uh, I think a week before. So, Call of Duty Ghosts, we actually got a trailer and we found out the name of the dog, which is Riley. Um, the graphics and that just looked awesome. And um, with the new engine um, coming out for Call of Duty and now with all the added features for consoles where you could like lean that, which you could do on PC anyway, but now you can do them on the console and just the improve uh, improvements in graphics and everything like that. That's just why I'm excited for Call of Duty. The big one this year was Battlefield 4. Now that is a big competitor for Call of Duty this year. It actually gets released about a month before um, Call of Duty. So I think it's the 31st of, 31st of October actually. So it's only about two weeks. Um, no, it's about a week actually. Um, but I've actually um, I bought uh, Medal of Honor 
Warfighter last year, and that means that I get um, access to the Battlefield 4 beta, which I'll be doing some live stream for you guys in September, August, September when it comes out. Um, but yeah, the Frostbite 3 engine in Battlefield 3, um, you can have like complete buildings just fall down and everything, and it just looks amazing. So, Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty, probably my biggest two games that were showing off at E3. And moving on to sort of my second category of games was Forza 5, Dead Rising 3, and Halo 5. Oh my god guys, Forza 5 was amazing, they showed off um, a car in a garage, I thought it was real, I think most people actually thought it was real, and then it was actually oh, like, yeah, and then they actually said, oh yeah this is running real time on a PC, and we were like, wow that's just amazing, the graphics on it is run with the same, um, no it's not actually. Don't worry though, I was just going on something else. Um, but yeah, Forza, the graphics in it just looks amazing. Hopefully they stick with the same sort of gameplay as they did for Forza 4, um, because that was awesome. But yeah, just the graphics in Forza 5 really sells it. They are amazing. And the actual, uh, they're reducing AI, they're what they're going to do. It's like, it's cloud-based, and with, and I think Forza is actually a Xbox One exclusive. Um, so with the Xbox One cloud, they are going to be actually... Um, basically there will be no AI, it will be taking everyone in the world, their driving style, and putting that into one main AI. So when you play single player, you will still be playing against everyone in the world. You will never be playing single player again. Um, on to the next game, uh, Dead Rising 3. Now this just looked awesome, the amount of new things you can do. Uh, again, the graphics, just with the next gen consoles, this is just going to be it. Um, so they can all run at 60 FPS, uh, full 1080p HD, so the graphics for most of these games are going to be amazing. But Dead Rising 3, just all the new stuff, all the new tools, and driving your cars, and ramming down zombies, and everything like that, just looks amazing. Halo 5, we didn't really get that much about, but we did get a trailer, and it's actually coming out next year, in 2014. The trailer just looked um, awesome. There wasn't really that much that was going on. It was just, uh, if you know the Halo series, you know who Master Chief is. Uh, basically, it was just Master Chief walking in the desert. You didn't even know it was him because he had like a robot. This big uh, robot came out of the ground and like the wind like blew Master Chief's helmet uh, uh, hood off of his jacket and we got to see his face and that. Not much else went on, but it just looked awesome and I cannot wait for Halo 5. Um, it's not actually confirmed that it's called Halo 5, um, but yeah, so I'm just going to call it the Halo sequel at the moment. Um, so I've got a list of other games which I'm not going to go really into lots about, I'm just going to read them out. These are games that I'm looking forward to. Most of them are Xbox One exclusives, like um, Sunset Overdrive, Project Spark, um, Destiny I think and Titanfall are all Xbox One exclusive, they just look awesome. Then we've got Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed 4, Wolfenstein, The New World Order, that's probably um, one of the newest games I've seen and it looks pretty good. Uh, Saints Row 4 and FIFA 14, all of these games I'm looking forward to and will be um, actually purchasing at the date of the release of the Xbox One which we um, have yet to find, found, uh, find out yet. Um, but yeah guys, so just leave a few comments down below if you want to get any of them games, I'll probably leave a list um, of the uh, games and that that I'm getting in the description, so yeah, leave a comment of which games you're getting, which console you're getting, um, which games you're looking forward to, um, and yeah, that's about it guys, so this has been a bit of a different video today, but I just wanted to... Um, I don't know, just go over some of the E3 because it's been really exciting for me to find out about all these and I wanted to share a little bit of my thoughts with you guys. So, yeah guys, I know it's been a little bit late, about a week um, after actual E3, but yeah guys, um, thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon with another video. So, yeah guys, thanks for watching and bye.